Hey guys, it's Lizzie. So this video is how to deal with anxiety and extreme stress, how to cope, and ways that I calm myself down. So disclaimers before I begin. So I have not been diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. I do not have a generalized anxiety disorder. I don't get panic attacks. My mental illness diagnosis is bipolar disorder. But I do find that when I'm in depression, I sometimes get anxiety as a part of that. I also find that when I'm manic, sometimes I get extreme stress where physically I just feel so stressed and tense and my heart starts beating really fast sometimes. But none of that is anxiety or panic attacks or anything like that. So I'm not at all claiming to have that or to experience that. Also, this was requested by Sing Breathe Live on Instagram. Thank you for sending me the video request. So the most important thing with dealing with anxiety or stress, especially if you've been diagnosed with clinical anxiety, is to get enough sleep. And this goes for any mental illness, but I just notice when I get like an hour less or two hours less of sleep, that's when all my symptoms crop up. And especially when I feel really stressed, getting less sleep, it makes the stress even worse. It makes me feel awful, even while medicated. And I've done a bit of research on clinical anxiety and sleep is even more important than medicine in treating it. And so something that goes along with that is having a bedtime routine, a nighttime routine. I find that I cannot interact with people after a certain time. So I try to go to bed by 9 or 10 every night. And if I'm interacting with a lot of people, texting people in a really exciting way, after like 8 p.m., I might not be able to sleep for a few hours. And so literally turn your phone on do not disturb, get away from people, just go into your room and read. Do not look at your phone because if you look at your phone, even in the nighttime mode, in the dark, your body, your brain literally thinks it's the sun and begins to wake up. So have a light on or a lamp on in your room and just be reading a book for about an hour before you sleep. Don't watch YouTube videos, don't watch TV, don't watch movies, don't interact with people, just be by yourself for at least an hour or two hours before you go to bed and that will help you get on a normal sleep time routine. Also try to wake up earlier. If you wake up around like 6 or 7 rather than later in the day, and you try to go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time every day, that just works so much better, getting your circadian rhythms in track. Just give your body like consistent rhythms. But the most important thing other than sleep and taking medication, if that's a thing that you do for your anxiety, is to work out. I work out every single day, I run every morning. So I woke up this morning and I was in a slight depression. I felt so stressed. And I immediately did my workout and I went running and I listened to music and just getting into the rhythm, even just walking, honestly, just like taking steps, but running is even better because it, it releases chemicals in your brain. But get into a routine of working out every single day, doing cardio, not weightlifting or HIIT training or yoga, although all those things are really good, but doing cardio is the most important thing in releasing those chemicals in your brain and just getting your body to calm down. I just feel like after I work out, I'm so de-stressed. But when it comes specifically to being stressed and to anxiety, having tension in your body, which I've had so much lately, is to do stretching and yoga. I try to give myself extra time in my workout routine. So after I go running, I come back into my room and I just stretch and do my own yoga routine to music for like 10 or 20 minutes. And just like stretching in those positions, not having to worry about anything, it really helps my body calm down. Because for me, when I get really stressed out, it's like a physical thing in my body. Like all my muscles are so tense and it feels horrible. Because even if I mentally feel okay, like my body feels so stressed. It happens so much where I don't even know why I'm stressed but my body is just so freaking tense. And so I find that taking the time to stretch in the morning, at night, during the day and just focusing only on stretching and breathing, it helps immensely. Also going along with that, since anxiety and stress is going on in your brain, eating consistently, eating healthy, eating enough carbohydrates is extremely important. I find that when I start getting really stressed or worried or going into depression, my body just stops eating because I'm so stressed I don't want to eat. 
but force yourself to eat when you start feeling like that because that's when your brain needs the glucose the absolute most. I think that there are so many dieting myths, so many lies going around. Do not go on a low carb diet ever. Your brain runs primarily on glucose and your body converts glucose from carbohydrates. So be eating lots of whole grains like brown rice, whole wheat pasta, bread, fruits, vegetables. I made a whole video on how to eat healthy, so go watch that if you're interested, but just make sure to be eating and eating at the same time every day if you start to feel like your body is stressed. So another thing I do is I track my mood every single day and I make a to-do list of everything I'm doing. I write out how my mood is in the morning and at night and I just find that when it comes with mental illness symptoms, it helps to be aware of what you're feeling and why you're feeling it. So for example, if my heart starts beating really, really fast and I start, you know, crying randomly or feeling suddenly insecure about myself, like with bipolar, I'll literally hear voices in my head sometimes or I'll have like emotions and thoughts that are not even from me. And so with any mental illness, being aware ahead of time and in the moment that you're having symptoms, it helps you separate it from what's actually going on. So my last therapy appointment, my therapist told me that the whole point of therapy is to be ahead of your symptoms. So before you have an episode or have a thought or emotion only caused by the mental illness, you're like, oh, okay, I am having really bad anxiety right now, or I'm sort of manic, or I'm in depression. And then you realize, oh, the reason I'm having this negative thought or this scared thought is because of the disorder, not because of what's actually going on. And that's not to invalidate emotional experience, it just is really helpful because if I have a really negative thought about myself or about something going on, it's so much easier to be able to separate it and be like, oh, this is because I'm having symptoms right now, not because of the actual state of my life. I also just analyze my emotions a lot. So if I start worrying about a relationship or worrying about money or worrying about school or worrying about getting on medicine, anything like that, I always just analyze and analyze and analyze. And if you start analyzing it enough, you realize that everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> and then I'm able to not worry about it as much. Again, if you have actual anxiety, I don't think that will work, but for what I experience, it just really helps when I break down what I'm actually thinking about. But therapy is really, really important for this too because you have to be self-aware and your therapist will help you figure out, like personalize for you, like what are your triggers, what to do when you start getting more anxiety, going into a panic attack. Your therapist will help you to become so self-aware. And when it comes to mental illness, self-awareness is the most important thing. So definitely go to therapy. It doesn't need to be like this permanent commitment thing. It can just be a few sessions that will help you become more aware of yourself. I find for me, even just one hour long session gives me so many insights and emotional wisdom in understanding myself. Let's get away from here. So some other things I do, I'm a Christian and reading my Bible every day and praying is so important. I think that spiritual, mental, emotional, physical are all interconnected. So obviously when it comes to mental illness, I will never say to not get professional treatment and to only pray about it. That's horrible. You need to combine everything together. I find for me, and I don't have an anxiety disorder, so I'm sure it's a lot different if you have an actual clinical anxiety disorder. But when I read my Bible every day and just give myself like 30 minutes to read different Bible verses and to pray, I do not feel stressed. The days when I tend to feel extremely stressed are the days when I haven't done my Bible study in the morning for a couple days. What I've been doing the past few months is the Jesus Calling devotional. Each day we'll have a little thing to read and then there'll be like four Bible verses. So what I do is I go to each of the verses in my Bible and I read them and the surrounding passage and then I annotate the Bible verses, think about them, and then I pray about everything going on in my life. This Jesus Calling book, Enjoying Peace in His Presence, that's the main focus of the devotional readings it's about finding peace in God letting God be like a shield so you don't get as affected by everything going on in your life I made a whole video over the summer on my relationship with God go watch it that has a lot to do with how I'm able to calm down and not get overwhelmed but praying out loud really helps so what I will do is I'll light a candle in my room turn off the lights and just talk out loud to God or like go out somewhere where there's nature and sun and trees and water go to the beach just go out in nature somewhere and talk out loud to God. If I don't have the privacy to do that, I will write out in a journal a prayer and that makes me feel very, very peaceful. All of 
friends are settling down. So another thing that my therapist actually told me to do is to make a list of things that make you happy or make you calm down and just have that written down. Take a picture of it, put it in your phone. Every time you feel like really stressed out or worried, look at the list and do something from that list. So some of the things that are on my list are praying out loud, stretching, candles, reading, listening to music, running, yoga, cleaning, doing a face mask, talking to my friends, redoing my nail polish, <laughs> making food. So then when you feel really stressed, look at the list, pick something from the list, and it will help you to calm down and distract you from your anxiety. Something else I've heard a lot about anxiety is that distracting is kind of the way to go. And so what really helps me and will probably help you is being around other people. You don't even need to directly discuss what's worrying you, although you can, but just being around other people. I hope you guys can relate to this, but my whole life, I've had extreme emotions. So I will be freaking out and so crying so hard and so worried about something. And once I'm able to talk about it with other people, it's almost like I'm in like this really low, dark emotional place and once i start talking to anyone about it or just talking to anyone it like pulls me up to reality and i realize that it's not actually that bad so i have really close people in my life who i'm able to talk to about things and so i just find that if i'm able to like immediately text someone when i'm scared or talk through with my roommates and my friends what's going on it makes it feel a lot less scarier just talking out loud about it and kind of getting a reality check from people in my life just because my emotions are extreme and i'm not invalidating my emotions or your own but just like my actual emotional reactions to things are not always in check with like the actual situation you know another thing that really helps me so i'm very in the moment and present-minded so because I don't think big picture, I can't really escape my emotions sometimes. But recently I figured out how to do this. So whenever I'm like within a really bad emotion and it's like super painful or scary, I imagine like flying over the emotion. So I feel like there's a wall and I'm only like within the current emotion and I don't think about like how it's not forever. <laughs> but if you think about flying over the emotion, then you'll think like, oh, like in a week, in a month, it'll be okay. I won't always feel like this. So I always try to zoom out from my emotions and like try to look at myself from an outside perspective, from like the perspective of my future self or from another person. And so that's why too, like I just talk about my emotions with other people. There's been so much stress going on lately in my life. And I find that like, if I'm really, really scared about something, just like immediately texting someone, telling my friends, asking them to pray for me, praying for myself, writing out prayers. Honestly, Christianity helps me immensely. I don't know what I would do without God because I always have these extreme intense emotions and it's so scary and awful. And knowing that God is in control and I can always go to him and just say he hears my prayers, being able to read through the Psalms and seeing everyone else freaking out and being so scared, but then going to God and then knowing that God is all powerful, this world isn't all there is, it just makes me feel a lot better. But again, I'm not at all saying that you don't need professional treatment or don't need medicine. I'm just saying that for me with my bipolar, it really helps being on medicine and then also having my relationship with God and being able to go to that. Because medicine, it doesn't completely get rid of symptoms. But I just find that when I have really bad symptoms, I don't really want to be around people. I kind of want to like coil and be by myself, but that's the opposite of what you want to do. It's not going to help. So I just find that like when I'm within myself, like for example, this morning my depression was really bad, but the first person I talked to, I went to get coffee and I was just so happy just like talking to someone. So I feel like my personality fully comes out when I'm around other people. When I'm with myself, I can like overanalyze and get so stressed, but when I just talk to other people and I'm just normal, it really, really helps. <laughs> And then also, I just think everyone is so busy and so stressed because they're so busy. And so just have time to yourself for like an hour and it can be at night before you go to bed where you're able to do what you actually want to do. So for me, like I'm a workaholic, I always work and because of that, I get stressed and it's not healthy. So I have time in my schedule where I can read on my own, where I can write on my own, whatever I want to write. Like I allow myself to have so much time in my schedule to be around my friends and just having time to just like 
chill and do what you want to do that's not like school related or work related is super important i schedule out my life every single day like what i'm doing throughout the day like my to-do list like i'll be like 9 to 10 do this 11 to 12 do this so say i'm gonna read from like 5 to 6 reading time by myself and i'm also more introverted but i'm very social i have a ton of close friends who always want to spend time with me so just this past week i've literally felt so stressed and like there's not enough of me to go around it emotionally suffocated because so many people and so if you are an introvert just saying no to people you have to take care of your mental and emotional health you have to take care of your anxiety your depression your bipolar whatever your mental illness is if you don't take care of your brain if you don't take care of your physical health everything else is going to be negatively affected and so if you're more introverted and you just need time to unwind by yourself say no to people your friends are fine they don't need to talk to you all the time your boyfriend your girlfriend your family is fine if you need time away from them just to be by yourself say no to people cut conversations short say you can't hang out with someone one day my problem is i always say yes to people i don't like saying no but if you cannot prioritize yourself you're not going to be able to help other people one of my favorite things is aristotle wrote this thing called on friendship kind of like an essay and you guys should go read it but he says that if you're not a good friend to yourself you're not going to be a good friend to other people and the bible talks about this so much too where you have to love people as much as you love yourself so it starts with nurturing your soul going to god just for you taking care of yourself if you cannot do that you're going to be way less effective at being a good friend being able to love and take care of other people. You have to come first. You have to say no to some things to some people or your mental illness is gonna flare up and it's gonna make everything awful. Sorry, that is so blunt. I just, when I have episodes, it's really bad. Anyways, I hope that these tips were really helpful. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye.